Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia, live on Facebook. I'm Carol Howell, your host, and I am walking. I don't know what you're doing, but I want you to get off your bottom end and get your feet to moving. We're going to walk for just a few little minutes here, then I'm going to give you a break because i got to sit down and look at my notes to talk to you anyway. But I want you to walk with me. Let's Talk Dementia, live on Facebook, is brought to you by... HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. They are amazing mechanics for Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Toyota, and Acura. I said all five of them just like that. I'm so proud of me. You can reach them at 803-985-0985. Also, Life in the Carolinas. Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on the internet. And you can search the show called Remembering No More got me and my sweet mama in it. I'm not going to watch it because it makes me cry. All right, you guys, are you up walking? Are you moving? Getting some steps in? I got my step counter on. I wear it every day. Walk, 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 walk. Now, if you need to walk slowly, walk, walk, walk. I don't care. The point is, do you have your legs moving? <sighs> do you feel it in your chest? Can you still talk? If you can still talk, that's good. If you cannot still talk, slow down. We don't need to do that. All right, keep moving a little bit. This is important in my world, and it's important in your world. It's always been. It's no different now because of the stresses that you're under caregiving than it was 20 years ago before you ever even heard of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. And if you did hear about it, you didn't care because nobody you knew had it. Everything was fine. You needed to walk then. You need to walk now. And I am going to tell you about the benefits of walking for grief. Yes, I'm going through grief. Some of you have lost your loved ones recently. I know that. We've talked. I was at their funerals, maybe. You've gone through grief, and I'm going through grief. But even if your loved one is still with us, demanding all kinds of stuff from you today, you're still experiencing grief. How do I know that? 13 years of Alzheimer's caregiving. You're still experiencing grief for what you have lost, for what you know you'll never get back, and for what you know is ahead, grief. So, all right, slow down that walking because we're gonna sit down here in just a minute. What I know is that when I walk, I feel better. Now, why is that? Is there a correlation between walking, walking inside and reducing grief, walking outside and reducing grief? Do they come together? Do they balance out some way? All right, take a deep breath in. <sighs> That feels good. Let it out real slowly, and as you do, bend over and just let those arms hang like limp noodles. Tell me that doesn't feel good. Little pendulums hanging there. See how they go round and round? And breathe in again, and raise up very slowly, because if you raise up quick, you're going to get a buzz, and it's not a happy one. All right, now we can sit down for just a minute. So, yeah, I have been using exercise as... Uh, or walking specifically, as a way to fight my grief, as a way to handle the stress of life that has changed for me. And I wanted to talk with you about it. So I pulled up several articles. You know, I just, I tell you, you just wonder about your own self some days because I just walked, got up, walked to the living room, got in there, and Michael started to tell me something, and I forgot what I went in there for and what I went in there for was my glasses. Now, Maybe I can read this. I'm holding it as far out as my arm will allow it to go. <laughs> so is there any correlation? Is it just Carol that getting out and walking is helping my grief and helping my stress? And it has for quite some time. It, does that make sense? Um, or there is a lady um, whose last name is Baumgartner. Her husband died suddenly. And um, as she says, her world was upended. Yeah, we can dig it, right? She actually is a relationship coach in California, and she wrote this article that I found I thought was interesting. She said, by night she struggled to sleep, and by day she was in a mental haze. She said, I felt like I was on a roller coaster in the fog. Do y'all get that? I tell you, I really have for the last couple months. It's like my brain just wasn't clicking on all cylinders, and no matter how hard I tried to concentrate, I just couldn't. Um, and that's why I even had to take some time off and not talk to clients because I knew my brain was not what it should be. She said, at a time when everything else in her life seemed to be in suspended animation, Baumgartner gradually resumed walks with her neighbor. 
At first, walking helped me see that even though my own world was standing still, the outside world was going on. Now, isn't that the truth? If you stay in the house and you stay busy caregiving, if you're, if you're the caregiver, or if you've already lost your loved one and you just stay still on the sofa, you start to think that all, ex all that exists is what's going on inside your four walls, and it's not. It is hard for me to believe that at the moment my mama passed away on May 31st that everybody in the world didn't stop and grieve with me. Honey, they didn't stop and grieve with me in the room next door. No, they didn't because life goes on and we have a tendency to forget that when we're busy with the minutia of dementia caregiving. There are so many details you've got to tend to and that seems to be all your brain can think about. But did you know that there is life outside of that? And we forget that. Um, she says, <clears throat> I began to see the walks as a time when I could put a moratorium on my grief. Well, that really hit me because, I, I don't know, sometimes you just feel like if you don't take your mind somewhere else, take a moratorium on my grief, a moratorium on the stress and the planning and the doing that you have with caregiving, if you don't do that, then it's not going to be pretty. You are not going to look so good afterwards. You're going to get all wrinkled up and need some serious Botox, girl. You got to take some time. And I just thought it was interesting that this person felt that way too. The birds, lizards, trees, flowers, and panoramic vistas captured her eye and drew her focus outward. For a half hour, she took a much needed breather from thinking about the terrible events in her life. She says, it was like my brain got a break. Now, that's why I say there's a difference between walking inside like we just did, which is really dang good for you, and walking outside like I'll do later today several times. See, being outside, experiencing nature, feeling hopefully some cool air here in, in the mid part of June in the South, it's hot, but feeling that cool breeze every once in a while, looking up and seeing how blue the sky is. And then there's just a few white puffy clouds and in the distance you see green. So all you see is green and blue and white. It's pretty wonderful. That was yesterday for my husband and I. Getting out and looking at flowers, seeing trees that, hmm, that tree needs some water. Or look at the beautiful magnolia blooms. See, now your mind is taken away from what it is you're dealing with and now you're thinking about something else. I know you can't do this all day long. I know you've got to spend time doing all those things that caregiving requires. And in grief, I've got to spend time grieving, working through my grief, but I don't have to live in my grief. And that's where the difference comes in. All right. She says, the quiet, sometimes she felt like walking with her friend. Now I walk with Michael, my husband, and, and we get out and, and we, and, and the dog, and the dog has to be in the stroller because she has seizures. So we're pushing the baby stroller with the dog soon out walking. And it's, and we have some of our best talks out walking. And sometimes we're reminiscing about mama or his mama. Sometimes we're planning our move to Florida. Sometimes we're talking about who knows what important things like what we're going to have for supper. But we talk. But sometimes I get out in the mornings and I have my time with the Lord and I walk and I pray, just me and the Lord, so I never walk alone, do I? If you go back on our website on under podcasts, and, and it should be on YouTube also, you'll find an episode called, I Wonder, Lord. And that was my prayer out walking one morning about a week or two before Mama passed. That quiet communion, just you and the Lord and nature outside. Now that's some good stuff. But later on in the day when you take that second walk, Consider asking a friend to go with you because you don't know what's going on in that friend's world. And guess what? They need you as much as you need them. So, and if you, the article says if you decide to go online and see how many scientific studies um, there are about walking and coping and grief, you will discover there's not many. There's not been a lot done about that. But good evidence has shown that physical activity, just physical activity, helps to reduce stress and it helps to reduce full-fledged depression now think about that we know that caregivers in their in in their journey uh, I forget the statistic but a high number of them are actually depressed and most of them are not receiving help for that depression so we know that physical act 
activity can help with that. Grief is a highly stressful thing. And if you don't believe it, um, take it from me. It's very stressful. Got Just got through checking my blood pressure to make sure everything was good. Walking outdoors in natural surroundings or walking on a treadmill, either one can help you. Um, it did say that walking outside was not as helpful if you've got to walk in a high traffic urban area. No joke. They had to put that in the article like I wouldn't know that dodging cars, you know, in New York City might not be the safest place to walk. I don't think we got that trouble problem too much around here in the South, but <laughs> anyway, going for walks, even short ones, is an act of self nurturing. In the depths of grief and stress, it can be difficult to muster the energy to take care of yourself. Getting some exercise is a step in the right direction. You know what, folks? Even if you only walked what you walked with me today, that's probably more than you did yesterday. Or maybe you decide every day I'm going to get out for five minutes this week, every day for five minutes. Next week, I'm going to do it twice, once in the morning and once in the night. Then I'm going to go take, take it to 10 minutes. Or maybe I'm going to throw in a lunchtime walk. Make it happen. It is important. Don't think this is something I don't have to do. You do for the health of your heart. Remember, I've told you anything's good for your heart, it's good for your brain, and also for your emotions because the better you feel, the better your person who you are caregiving for or feel, your LO, your loved one. And that's what we want. It is a circle that comes back. Okay, think about that. Um, I don't know that there have been too many days we've missed walking since. May 8th, when things started going really downhill for Michael and I. Even when my mom was in the group home and it was her last days and I had been staying with her, I still got out and walked. And even when I'd go for visits and I'd get there like at 10, 30, 11 o'clock and stay till 4 or 5, I took time to get out and walk. And I would tell her, Mom, I'm going for a walk. I'll be back in just a little while. Now, if you're caregiving and you're in that in-home setting, what do you do with your loved one? It's called a wheelchair. Put them in it. Go for a walk. Now, when you back it out over the door, in case some of you guys don't know this and you're not used to wheelchairs, you don't push someone through the door. You turn around and you pull them through. I can't get my pants in the picture. You pull them through the door. Most doors have that little lip. Push them through the door. They're going to fall forward. You're going to have another host of problems. So don't do that. Um, I really love the idea that if your wheelchair has um, a seatbelt, my mama's wheelchair had a seatbelt, put it on. It is a little extra safety factor there. If it doesn't, for females especially, take a, a pretty scarf, tie it around them, and tie that scarf in the front. I had a client one time that whose mother would, could not stay upright well. She kept wanting to lean forward, and she took a bib apron, put it on her, tied it around the back of the wheelchair, and you couldn't even tell from the from the front that mom was tied in. It just looked like she had on the apron. With a guy, you could do that with a zip up the front jacket, maybe, that you've altered a little bit, an old one that you can get around the back of that seat and zip them right up the front. Use a necktie to hold them in. Now, if you're in a community in most states, they're not going to let you do that. But we're talking about being at home. I hope that helps you and gives you something to think about and something you're going to get your legs to moving on. Yeah, breathe in and breathe out. It's so good for you. It's so good for you. Special thanks to our sponsors, Life in the Carolinas. You can find them at lifeinthecarolinas.com and on YouTube, Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story. And HD Imports, where you need to get your Honda, Kia, Hyundai, Acura, Toyota, serviced or repaired. And I don't care how far away from York County you are. Well, maybe not like California. That might be a way. <laughs> but if you're anywhere nearby in York County, it's the place you want to be. 803 985 803-985-0985 and tell them Carol sent you. All right, guys, see you tomorrow morning. Okay, time to get up. Go for a walk. Bye.